the impact of man-made global warming on a blizzard called Nemo and on Hurricane Sandy. Hi, I'm Bob Tisdale. The blizzard that struck New England on Friday, February 8, 2013, was named Nemo by the Weather Channel. According to websites around the United States, warmer than normal sea surface temperatures along the New England coast contributed to the storm. Further, those websites mentioned that the unusually warm sea surface temperatures were caused by man-made global warming. Examples In the blog post, Life-Threatening Blizzard Poised to Strike New England at Climate Central, Andrew Friedman writes, As was the case when Hurricane Sandy struck in late October, sea surface temperatures are running a couple degrees above average off the east coast, which, according to climate scientists, may reflect both natural climate variability and the effects of man-made global warming. The presence of unusually warm waters could aid in the rapid development of the storm system and infuse it with additional moisture, thereby increasing snowfall totals. Later in the day on Friday, Climate Progress published Historic Blizzard Poised to Strike New England. What role is climate change playing? The post was written by Joe Rahm. He presented a quote from Kevin Trenberth, who's a distinguished senior scientist at the Climate Analysis Section of the National Center for Atmospheric Research. The third paragraph reads, The moisture flow into the storm is also important, and that is enhanced by higher than normal sea surface temperatures, SSTs. These are higher by about 1 degree Celsius, almost 2 degrees Fahrenheit, than normal, pre-1980, due to global warming. And so that adds about 10% to the potential for a big snow. Kevin Trenberth added, Every storm and event is unique. It always has unique ingredients. So it is hard, if not impossible, to take apart, because any piece missing means the storm behaves differently. So event attribution is not well posed. Instead, we look for the environment in which the storm is occurring and how that has changed to make conditions warmer and moister over the oceans. Let's take a look at the data to see how much of the current warm sea surface temperatures off the coast of New England are, quote, due to global warming, end quote, as uh, Kevin Trenberth noted. We can also verify Andrew Friedman's statement about, quote, unusually warm waters, end quote. This is a recent map of the sea surface temperature anomalies for the east coast of the United States. Maps such as this are available from the NOAA NOMADS website. This one is for the week centered on January 30, 2013. The sea surface temperature data is NOAA's best. It's their Optimum Interpolation Sea Surface Temperature Data Version 2. It's also known as Reynolds OI.V2. We can see that, yes, there were warmer than normal sea surface temperature anomalies for that week. In case you're wondering, anomalies are departures from the average sea surface temperatures for the period of 1971 to 2000. Those are NOAA's standard base years for sea surface temperature anomaly data. When I originally performed this analysis, I used the sea surface temperature data for the coordinates of 35 north to 45 north latitude and 77 west to 67 west longitude because they captured those two hotspots shown in the map. But that data was for the week centered on January 30th, well before NEMO. Today, February 11th, NOAA released their sea surface temperature data for the week centered on Wednesday, February 6th, and that's the week of the blizzard called NEMO. As you'll note, the sea surface temperatures were cooler that week than they had been the week earlier. Here's the week of NEMO, 
and here's the week prior to that. We'll continue to use these coordinates because they capture Nemo's storm track over the oceans pretty well. First we'll present the weekly sea surface temperature anomalies off the New England coast starting with the week centered on Wednesday, January 3rd, 1990 and ending with the week of February 6th, 2013. The horizontal red line represents the most recent weekly value of 21 one hundredths of a degree Celsius. That's really not too warm. Sure does look like it's been warmer many times over the past two plus decades. In other words, Andrew Friedman's claim of unusually warm water appears to be an embellishment, an exaggeration. And I suspect when Kevin Trenberth claimed that sea surface temperatures were, quote, higher by about one degree Celsius, almost two degrees Fahrenheit than normal, end quote, he was referring to data from earlier in the year. Sea surface temperatures had cooled quite rapidly off the coast of New, e New England before Nemo made its way there. Let's take a look at the long-term monthly data. Maybe it'll show evidence of unusually warm sea surface temperatures and man-made global warming. For the long-term data, we have to switch data sets to NOAA's Extended Reconstructed Sea Surface Temperature Data version 3B. It's also known as ERSST.V3B. The data for the month of February 2013 will not be available until early in March. So we'll use the January 2013 value for the most recent temperature anomaly for the New England coastal waters the red horizontal line. Since the weekly data has been showing cooling over the past month, the February 2013 data may be cooler than what we're showing. As we can see, quite easily the sea surface temperature anomalies off the coast of New England were quite a bit warmer during the 1940s and 50s. And they've regularly been warmer as far back as the 1850s and 1860s. Again, that's 1850s and 1860s at the beginning of this data set. It doesn't look as though there's anything unusual about the current sea surface temperature anomalies off the coast of New England. And one would have expected the sea surface temperatures to be much warmer now than they were in the 1940s if man-made greenhouse gases had any influence on the sea surface temperatures there. We can also look at the sea surface temperatures for all of the Januaries since 1854. This graph presents the sea surface temperatures not anomalies. The January 2013 temperature of 11.5 degrees Celsius is shown as the red horizontal line. January sea surface temperatures were much warmer in the 1940s and 1950s and occasionally as far back as the 1850s. Again, there's nothing unusual about the current sea surface temperatures off the coast of New England and we definitely would have expected the sea surface temperatures to have been much warmer now than they were in the 1940s if man-made greenhouse gases were responsible for the warming. Apparently, man-made greenhouse gases have had no influence on the sea surface temperatures here. I discussed this in a post at my blog, Climate Observations. The title of that post was, Dear Chicken Little, The Sky is Falling, It's Snowing but sea surface temperature anomalies off New England are not unusual. That post was also cross-posted at What's Up With That, the world's most visited website about global warming and climate change. Andrew Friedman at Climate Central referred to Hurricane Sandy in his post, stating, As was the case when Hurricane Sandy struck in late October, sea surface temperatures are running a couple degrees above average off the east coast. 
the same problem exists with the sea surface temperatures along Sandy's storm track. That is, they show no evidence of man-made global warming. I presented this in two blog posts back in November of 2012. The first was titled, Sea Surface Temperature Anomalies Along Sandy's Track Haven't Warmed in 70 Plus Years. The second, October 2012 sea surface temperatures and anomalies along Sandy's path were not unusual. Now we know Sandy's storm track. So let's take a look at the extratropical portion that is, we'll take a quick look at the sea surface temperature anomalies of the area of the North Atlantic bordered by the coordinates of 24 north to 40 north and 80 west to 70 west. We'll also start the graph in 1938, because that was the year of the Great New England Hurricane. It was a Category 3 hurricane when it came ashore on Long Island. To put that into perspective, the last I heard, researchers were still trying to determine if Sandy was at hurricane strength when it came ashore last year. As we can see in this graph, the sea surface temperature anomalies of Sandy's track were above normal, but they were not unusually warm. The blue line represents the linear trend. It shows that sea surface temperatures there have cooled since 1938 not warmed, they cooled. The reason for the cooling is easier to see if we smooth the data with a 13-month running average filter. The smoothing minimizes any seasonal component in weather noise. As you can see, there was a cooling shift during the 1960s, and it was quite strong. Like the New England coastal waters, man-made greenhouse gases have had no impact on the sea surface temperatures for Sandy's storm track. And this holds true for global sea surface temperatures during the satellite era. That's the last 31 years. While global sea surface temperatures have warmed, there is no evidence that man-made greenhouse gases were responsible for the warming. This map illustrates the trends in the sea surface temperature anomalies of the global oceans from 1982 to 2012. 1982 is the start year for the Reynolds OI.V2 data from NOAA. And again, that's the best data set that they have. We can see quite plainly that the East Pacific shows little to no warming, but the rest of the global oceans have definitely warmed. Let's divide the data into three subsets. We're going to look at the sea surface temperature anomalies for the East Pacific and for the South Atlantic, Indian, and West Pacific Ocean. We're excluding the North Atlantic because it has an additional mode of natural variability called the Atlantic Multidecadal Oscillation. And the Atlantic Multidecadal Oscillation has caused the North Atlantic to warm at a faster rate than the rest of the global oceans since about the mid-1970s. Let's start with the East Pacific. We can see that sea surface temperature anomalies there make wide swings, sometimes warming a lot and other times cooling. The temporary warmings are caused by El Niños, and the temporary coolings are from La Niña's. If we have Excel add a linear trend line, the trend shows that there has been little to no warming of the East Pacific sea surface temperature anomalies over the past 31 years. A linear trend of 8 one thousandths of a degree Celsius per decade is basically flat. Here's something you may find interesting and it shows up very plainly in the data for the South Atlantic, Indian, and West Pacific Oceans. We can see that the sea surface temperatures there warmed. They warmed quite a bit. We don't need a trend line to prove that to us. But let me highlight a few things. First, the strong El Nino event of 1982-83 and the few months leading up to it. And then we'll also highlight the strong El Nino events of 1986, 87, 88, 
and 1997-98, and finally 2009-2010. Now we can see that the warming of the sea surface temperatures in this region depends on those El Nino events. Keep in mind, El Nino events occur naturally, and they are fueled naturally. We can confirm that the warming is dependent on those El Nino events by removing their effects. That is, we'll replace the upward shifts in the data caused by the El Nino events with straight lines, with flat lines. It's now very easy to see that the sea surface temperatures for the South Atlantic, Indian, and West Pacific Oceans would have cooled if not for those strong, naturally fueled El Nino events. The South Atlantic, Indian, and West Pacific subset represents the sea surface temperatures of about 53% of the surface of the global oceans. It shows no evidence of a man-made global warming signal. The East Pacific data covers about 33% of the surface area of the global oceans. And it hasn't warmed in 31 years. Now that's about 86% of the surface area of the global oceans where the sea surface temperatures show no evidence of man-made global warming. And the other 14%, the North Atlantic, has another mode of natural variability which caused it to warm naturally at a rate that's faster than the rest of the global oceans during those 31 years. Individually, the East Pacific data the South Atlantic, Indian, and West Pacific data, and the North Atlantic data show no evidence of man-made greenhouse gas-driven global warming. Combine the three data sets and global sea surface temperature anomalies give the misleading appearance of man-made global warming. If this discussion is new to you, if the discussion of the natural warming of the global oceans is new to you, you'll likely have lots of questions. Like, where does the warm water come from for those El Nino events? I've answered many of your questions in my essay titled, The Man-Made Global Warming Challenge. It's available from my website through a blog post of the same name. I've answered many more questions you might have in my two-part YouTube video series titled The Natural Warming of the Global Oceans. And I've answered even more questions you might have in my ebook Who Turned on the Heat? It was introduced and is available through my blog post Everything You Ever Wanted to Know About El Nino and La Nina. There is nothing in the temperature records to indicate that hypothetical greenhouse gas driven global warming played any role in the warm sea surface temperatures associated with the blizzard Nemo or with Hurricane Sandy. There is also nothing to indicate that greenhouse gases, man made greenhouse gases, played any role in the warming of ocean heat content since 1955 or satellite era sea surface temperatures. Thanks for watching. Y'all have a nice day.